Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and we are well and truly in the month of Ramadan. It is currently, well, when you watch this, it will be the sixth day of fasting, I believe, on Sunday. So it's almost been a week and I wanted to talk a bit about how to reset if things aren't going that well. For some of us, you probably feel really proud of the achievements that you've done in this week, be it spiritual, be it academic, be it the blend of the two. And for some of us, it may just be complete chaos and we are just sleep deprived and nothing's going right on either side of our lives. And I think it's important to remember that you always have a second chance. It's not too late to reset. And I wanted to go through a few things that I do when I want to reset my week. I guess this could probably help you maybe reset your fast, reset your holy month, reset your week. So on Monday when you start fasting again, tomorrow hopefully it can be a fresh start and you can be optimistic for the days to come. It's important for our own sanity and for our own mental health to have a balance between the spiritual side and trying to make the most of this month that only comes once a year but also balancing our other things that we have in life and our other requirements and our other demands which don't stop things like exams things like work things like deadlines those things don't just stop because it's the month this holy month they still carry on and we are still expected to work at a level that's just as high as before you were fasting so it is important for us to try to find a balance between those two identities and like i said i'm going to be talking through a few things that I would highly recommend you do right now if you are struggling with this week and you feel like you just feel a bit deflated and you don't feel like you've done enough on either side of the spectrum then keep on watching. I post every Wednesday and Sunday and if you want to see more content from me like this then don't forget to press the subscribe button. It's never too late to build habits and it's really important to remember that this holy month is not a sprint, it's not a race where you're trying to be the best from day one, it is truly a slow pace, it's truly something that we should be taking you know at a slow pace where we're able to build slowly and not just lay all the foundations and lay all the bricks and lay the roof in one day that's not possible and i wanted to touch upon a little bit because i think we don't really hear this being talked about quite a lot but i think here in the west and i say the west as in like you know the, a non-muslim country i think here we are really torn between two identities and i've never really heard this being spoken about that much and i thought i'd just mention it to i guess give yourself a little bit of relief and to just pat yourself on the back for doing amazing even as far as you have come we are here we're fasting so we're, you know we're doing our religious duties waking up 4am eating going back to sleep we're starting work at home we're having exams we're, we're doing things as normal so we're expected to have this sort of balance between our life as a muslim and the spiritual side of things and that is supposed to be 100 percent of course and then the other side is supposed to still be 100 percent. and you know it's important to recognize that if you were to live in let's say a muslim country then you would be given a lot of relief this month a lot of people have from university from schools there's a month off or they have like earlier finishing times i know people that work in i think the uae and she said that they finish work at is it 2 2 p.m or 1 p.m in the ramadan so they can literally work for like four hours in the morning and then go home and relax sleep whatever recuperate these are things that we don't get here and you know fair enough i don't expect it here at all but then it is important to remember that we can't compare ourselves or have expectations that are too high of ourselves and we should always think about making sure that we are mentally keeping ourselves in check and not trying to do everything and try to be 100 percent at everything but rather to appreciate the small wins and rather to think about what we have done Done and to look at every success that we have done as a massive goal because it is difficult to do the two and to balance the two things are as normal here of course exams are happening as normal if you're sitting GCSEs or A levels then those are happening as normal there's no relief just because you're fasting and you know there shouldn't be but I think it's important to have a bit of mercy on yourself when thinking about how good or bad of a month you're having now the first thing that I like to do to reset and let's just say you've had a bad week so far and that's absolutely fine and you want to start fresh tomorrow the first thing that I do is I actually reflect and I'm going to be posting a video a bit later on about how I reflect for a new month and you'll see that at the end of this month but just to quickly talk about some of the questions I asked myself I asked myself sort of what happened this week so I just try to think back and look at what actually happened I also try to think about what I could have done better what were the things that stopped me from doing better so was it spending too much time on my phone was it having exams is it things that I can 
can control? Is it things that I can't control? Spending too much time on my phone is something that I can control. So that should be something that I obviously deal with. But for example, if I have too many deadlines at work, that's not really something I can control. And rather than feeling stressed out about it, I will try to mitigate it by maybe asking for a break or maybe trying to work my schedule around a bit differently. So I think it's important to recognize what things are in your control and what things aren't in your control. And to do this, you do need to reflect. Another thing I think about is what went to plan and what didn't go to plan. And if something didn't go to plan, how can I improve on that? So again, I like to think about, for example, last week, I wanted to read one juz of the Quran every single day. Didn't necessarily go to plan. Some days I listened to it on YouTube. Some days I read it, some days I didn't. You know, that's okay. I recognize that. And how can I now next week do better? How can I schedule my time better to make sure that I have prioritized the thing that's important to me? And that's important to reflect. And I think to start off with, I will leave some questions here on the side or even down below for you to ask yourself before you want to reset you do need to kind of think about what is the issue you can't reset without thinking and reflecting upon what the issue actually is the second thing that i do to reset is to have a digital declutter our phones are the most useful but the most toxic things that we own they're super useful for so many so many things especially in this month of ramadan they're really useful for reading quran for listening to on the go for keeping up with friends and there's groups and there's things that you can learn and there's so much goodness on it but there's also so distracting and i, I don't i don't need to tell you guys this but it's so distracting for so many reasons think about this week think about the week that just passed look at your screen time how much time did you spend on your phone did you spend all day on your phone unnecessarily look at what apps you are using if you have i don't know i'm sure other phones do this but on the iphone it breaks down exactly which apps that you spent time on look at them and just have a little think you know, i mean be honest with yourself have a little think and say right i spent two hours on tiktok like there's nothing on tiktok that you need to do in this month like nothing so get rid i spent half an hour on instagram okay what were you doing on instagram i think we need to look beyond and be a bit more critical about what we're doing it's not just i spent half an hour on instagram oh no it's i spent half an hour on instagram but actually i was listening to a lecture on instagram or actually i was um learning something or whatever be a bit critical with yourself and then set yourself a healthy target. So let's say your screen time is four hours. You might wanna say, okay, that's way too much. I wanna reduce that to 30 minutes. And I think that's a good target to have because it means that you can say to yourself, right, tomorrow, I'm gonna take a look. Tomorrow it was three hours, okay, still too much. Now it's two hours. And you become a lot more conscious about how long you're spending on your phone. And this does mean that you are able to set yourself a target and measure that target as well. Oh, by the way, this also means your laptop or your iPad or any digital device that you have if it needs to be decluttered and it needs to be you need to get rid of apps unfollow people whatever it is that you need to do that you feel like was blocking you from being successful being the best you last week do it this week the next thing is to declutter my space that means my physical space now decluttering your physical space is just as important as decluttering your digital space and your mental space your physical space is what you see every single day if you're seeing piles of stuff you're not going to be motivated to get up to do work to pray whatever it is that you want to do you're not going to be motivated to do it cleaning your physical space is so so important for kind of clearing up your mind so take a look around your space right now if you're at your desk take a look at your desk is it conducive to working hard is it allowing you to be productive or is it actually making you sit down and just feel sluggish and making you feel like you don't actually want to be here only keep items around you that are functional that have a functional purpose so for example you know you want to wake up in the morning to pray fajr let's say you want to like four o'clock in the morning no one wants to be scrambling through stuff to find a prayer mat or to find your prayer clothes or to locate whatever it is that you need you just want to get on it and you just want to be productive and be as efficient as possible so try to get like a nice storage basket or a nice like little box or something where you know it's pretty to look at and you feel proud of it put your prayer mat in there put your prayer clothes in there put your quran in there to speak whatever it is put that in there so you're able to easily locate those items without too much stress if you keep the items you need within a reachable proximity, it just means that you're able to work smarter. And when I say work, I mean working in the spiritual sense, in the academic sense, in the work work sense. It means that you should be able to be smarter and not work harder. Everything is close to you. There isn't junk around you that you don't need. If you haven't used something that's on your desk in the past couple of weeks or even days, get rid of it. What do you need for Ramadan? What do you need for this month to be productive? The next thing is I usually have an admin day, but I guess in your in, in this sense, I'm not gonna say an admin day, I'm gonna say an admin hour maybe, or a couple of hours. And this is where you essentially think about all the kind of non-negotiable scheduled arrangements that you have. So this could include meetings, seminars, lectures, any appointments that you have where you have to timetable it and block out some time 
put that in there. Now that you've unloaded those particular appointments, you now want to try to fit around your other requirements. You want to think about this month. So what do you want to do? You want to pray five times a day on time, okay? So where are those timings? Fit them into your schedule. Just like you would a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment, where does it fit into your day? Put them in so you can physically see where they go. Things like, I don't know, reading Quran, let's say you want to read three times or two times a day. Where in your day can you see that fitting in? The problem is a lot of the time we have these goals, but we don't actually action them. We don't schedule them in. So we don't actually know where they fit into our day. So what ends up happening is you have this target. Okay, I want to pray on time, but what time is prayer? I'm not sure. I know around what time it is, but I don't actually know what time it is because I haven't physically appreciated it and I haven't physically slot it into my diary as I would other things like an appointment or a meeting or anything else that we have to do that's scheduled. Find what works for you. So that could be using a planner, that could be a diary, that could be using a calendar on your phone, whatever works for you, that is what you want to use in order to plan. You don't want to try a brand new method right now where you have to figure out how it works. Use the habits that you already have formed based on your previous planning and your previous experience and then build on that and add that to your particular diary. Now, one thing that I recommend is using a Ramadan planner and there are so many of these out there that are completely free that I have found. There's one that I came across yesterday on Twitter, but she has one that I came across and has been downloaded, I think, was it 40,000 times or something? I'll leave the link for it down below. It's completely free. It's so, so well done. And it just gives you a bit of direction that you might need. And you don't have to start from day one. It's fine if you're starting from day seven or day eight or day nine. To reset, you need to start afresh. Forget about day one, two, three, four. They've gone now. Start from whatever day you are currently on and work from there. And by unloading these admin things, by unloading them from your mind, you're not carrying that burden of having to think about what time you have a lecture, what time you have to pray. These things can take a lot of space in your mind and take a lot of like mental burden. By unloading them, you're able to focus on the beauty. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree when you stand there to pray, thought from like two weeks ago comes into your mind. You're like, I don't understand why I'm having this thought right now. I want to have focus right now. And it's because we're carrying so much weight in our minds that it becomes quite difficult to think about other things when everything is in this little brain. Unloading definitely, definitely helps. And last but definitely not least is setting goals to be able to reflect. The most important part of reflecting actually is the aftermath of the reflection. So if you've done a reflection, you understand what went wrong, you understand how to do things better. Now you want to set goals for what you want to do next week. Now the best goals are goals that are reachable and goals that are staggered. So you want to staircase your goals. You don't want to just say from tomorrow, I'm going to read an hour a day. I'm going to pray every prayer on time. I'm going to X, Y, Z, and I'm going to do my homework and I'm going to do my revision. I'm going to meet like, it's not going to happen. If it happened like that, then all new year resolutions would never fail. But actually the majority of new year resolutions fail in the first couple of days, in the first couple of weeks, because people don't bag their goals. They just expect this new day, this new month, this new things happening. And so I'm expected to be different straight away. It doesn't happen like that. In fact, let's just forget religion. In science, in psychology, goals and habit forming takes at least 30 days to 40 days. And if you look at the month of Ramadan, it's 30 days, which is a beautiful number because it means that whatever goal, whatever habit you've started in the month, you will by the end of it have implemented it. Now, I think people, a lot of people tend to get this quite wrong. They start the month thinking, this is a new habit that I've begun and I'm expected to be perfect at this habit from day one. When actually the start of the month is a chance for you to begin a habit. And then the month is a chance for you to implement that habit and to embed that habit into your lifestyle. So if you, let's say one of the goals for me is to pray on time every day. So to not leave it to like the last minute or like not to just squeeze it in somewhere. But you know, when the prayer comes in, that's the time that you want to pray. That for me is quite a small habit, but actually that is a huge change in my routine and a huge change in my mindset. And if by the end of the month I'm able to do it, this month was completely worth it. Like it, I've been so successful. It's not a massive goal. It's not a life changing goal, but actually it's a goal that I feel like I struggle with. And so being able to implement it will be a huge success for me. The best way to think about a goal is say to yourself at the end of this month, what does the better me look like? So at the end of this month, I'm sure no one's going to be like, I want to be absolutely perfect. That's not realistic. A better you might look like someone who listens to less music, look like someone who listens to more podcasts or who unfollows certain accounts or who takes more time to reflect on the Quran or whatever it is. That might be someone 
someone who's a better you. To become that better you, what do you need to do to get there? That is not going to be you tomorrow. 100% not going to be you tomorrow. But what do you need to do from tomorrow to end of the month? From tomorrow to the end of the month, what can I do to get to that goal? There will be ups, there will be downs. How can I get there? That is how you want to think about the little wins that you need to get. And that's how you want to reset. If you haven't done it so far, that's absolutely fine. I mean, I haven't had a great seven days either. But it's never too late to reset and it's never too late to start again. I hope this was useful. I hope that this gave some of you a bit of comfort in knowing that it's never too late to reset and speaking from a Ramadan perspective because that's what we're you know we're fasting right now but you can use this for anything really never too late to start afresh and I think it's important for us to always remember that we are always learning we're always changing we're always we're always building and getting higher and I think we should always try to aim high, but always to be realistic with our expectations. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear how your first week is going or if you want to start again like I am. If you've had an amazing week, let us know what you've done to make that week perfect for you. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.